Hello everybody and welcome, this is Spoonie with another shipbuilding tutorial for Starbase. In this video, we're going to go back to the mining lasers that we set up in a previous tutorial, and we're going to see if we can make them more efficient and cover more ground. If you find this video confusing or aren't familiar with how mining lasers work and are set up, I'll put a link to the first video of the tutorial in the top right. It's a short video, about 9 minutes, and it goes over everything you need to know about how to set up a mining laser, how to set up a button for one, and how to set up a lever that will turn it left or right for you. In this video, we're going to set it up so that they oscillate automatically. So the first thing we're going to do to improve our setup is to add some batteries. Previously, we only had five. And if you remember, that was only enough to run the lasers for about 10 seconds. We'll increase this to 20. So now let's work on making our lasers more efficient. It's important that the generators are at 100% when the lasers are running so that the batteries don't drain as quickly. But we don't want the generator sitting at 100% when the batteries aren't draining and the lasers are turned off because that would waste fuel rods and it's possible that our ship could manage at only 35%. So for the sake of this video, let's assume that's true that we only need 35% out of our generators in order to run our ship when the lasers are turned off. However, we want the generators to ramp up to 100% when the lasers are running so that we get a little extra mileage out of them. The first thing you'll want to do, if you haven't done so already, is to rename your generator units, not the generator fuel chamber. So select all of your generator units. In this case, there are six. And we're going to, in the name value field, generator unit rate limit, delete everything except for GEN, which will represent the word generator. Do this for all six. Double check to make sure it all took effect. And now we're ready to edit our YOLO script. Even though we have 20 batteries, it's not necessary for us to add up the values of all of these batteries to get an idea of how much charge we have left. Because connected batteries act as one, we can just check one battery because when one battery is at 50%, it means they're all at 50%. Because of this, we're only going to rename one battery, renaming the stored battery power field to BATT. Next, we're going to edit our YOLO script using an if statement. So if the value of battery, colon BATT, which is what we named it, is less than 9,999, since the full value of the battery is at 10,000, then the value of generator, or colon GEN, equals 100. And again, remember, it is very important that you end all if statements with the word end. On the second line of YOLAL, we'll type if, colon BAT, B-A-T-T, -T, is greater than 9,999, then colon GEN, our generator should be set to 35. We'll end. On the third line, we'll just type go to one so that it constantly checks these three lines. So let's enter test mode and see if it works. As you can see, when our batteries are at full power, 10,000, our generator is set to 35. If our batteries begin to drain, our generator is set to 100 and begins to ramp up. And when the batteries recharge, the generator will automatically be set back to 35. Now that our lasers are a little more efficient, let's take a look at how we can get them to cover a little bit more ground. First, we're going to use a hinge to allow these turrets to move up and down. So in our asset browser, we're going to type in hinge. We're going to use the L profile hinge. We're going to set one off to the side. And 
And then we're going to move our laser a little bit out of the way. Remember, this will unbolt it and sever any connections that you've made to it, cables and pipes. Next, we're going to move our hinge in place. We're going to center it. And then we'll move our laser back. Make sure that some part of the hard point is in contact with this extended prong. Bolt it all down. It's also important to make sure that your hard point is no longer bolted to the ship itself. Next, we'll connect this hinge with some cables. Now when we're cabling the laser, once it has a hinge on it, it's really important to make sure that the cable extends up and over the hinge and doesn't connect on the underside. If you connect it on the other side, it will sever the connection whenever the turret moves out of position. But we can alleviate this by connecting it through the hard point from the top down. Next, we're gonna rename both of our hinges. The first hinge, we'll name door one. And the second, we'll name door two. The door open state, the first field that we just renamed, is either going to be zero or one. One represents its end angle. The zero represents its start angle. Since we want our end angle to not be 90 degrees, we'd rather it be something like 10, we'll also reset both of those so that it only moves about 10 degrees. And for a quick reminder of what we've set our values to before we get into YOLAL, we've set both of our left and right lasers just to be named laser. And our left turret base has been named turret R. Our right turret base has been named turret R2. And we'll set that to negative numbers so that it turns to the left. If we used positive numbers, it would turn to the right. And if you're curious about why or how we've set these values, I'll link the first tutorial where we go over it in detail in the top right corner. Now we'll set up a YOLAL script so that our lasers automatically oscillate whenever they're turned on. First, you're going to go to Edit Script. And in the first line, we'll set up an if statement that tells YOLAL not to oscillate the lasers unless they're turned on. Otherwise, they'll oscillate the entire time your ship is on, and it'll get really annoying really fast. So in the first line, we're going to set up an if statement that if the value of laser is equal to 1, and you'll notice I put two equal signs. That means if it's true. If it was an explanation point and then an equal sign, it would mean if it's false. So if the value of laser is not equal to 1, or if the value of laser is equal to 1, or another way to read this would be if it is true that the value of laser is 1, then go to 2. Else, go to 1. End. So what this statement will do is say if the value of laser is equal to 1, or if it is true that the value of laser is equal to 1, then go to the second line. Else, or otherwise, go to 1, which would just reread this first line until the value of laser was truly equal to 1. And then remember the word end at the end of your script, otherwise your if statement will not function. Next. On the second line, we'll type colon door one, so the value of door one equals one. 
We'll then skip four lines and do the same. So colon door one equals zero. And ULL is not case sensitive. So the fact that I have a lowercase d here and an uppercase d here is irrelevant. It does not matter. Do this all the way down, alternating between one and zero. Next, we'll do the same thing, but with door two. I'm going to start on the fourth line for this one. And now we're ready to test and see if this works. So we'll enter test mode and we'll turn on our lasers. As you can see, they are now oscillating up and down, but we also want them to oscillate left to right. So we'll do that next. So back at our YOLO chip, on the third line, we're going to add colon turret R which was the value of our first turret. And we're going to set that equal to 20. On the fifth line, we'll do the same for turret R2, which was our second. Only this will set to negative 20. And just like the doors, we're going to alternate between these values and zero all the way down. Now let's jump into test mode and see if it works. As you can see, when we activate our lasers, they begin to oscillate. When we turn them off, they return to their rest positions. This should help you get through asteroids a little bit more quickly and further increase the efficiency of your lasers.